Hey friends, Patrick here and today let's talk about ASP.NET Core Identity, the free stuff. It's not Identity Server. I know that uh, some of you confuse these two. Identity Server you have to pay for, Identity, ASP.NET Core Identity is free, comes with Blazor and .NET for instance, because there's this beautiful template. Let me just show you what I did here. I uh, let's, say, let's say I just create a new project. And now here in this project, we select Blazor Web App, then next, any great name, and then .NET 8, and authentication type, individual accounts with that. I think you know this by now. We get ASP.NET Core identity. So a complete, well, username, password system, let's say, with password reset, password confirmation, or email confirmation, even two-factor authentication out of the box and we don't need an interactive render mode for that. Even if you choose server, WebAssembly or auto, in essence, identity works, the whole process works with SSR static server side rendering alone. So this is what I did, but what I don't have or what you don't have out of the box is, well, more properties of course for your user because what you see here, for example, when we open the data folder, then we have this application user inheriting from the identity user, which comes from uh, identity, ASP.NET Core Identity. And when we go a bit further down, then we see what we got here, right? A phone number, email confirmed, the username, the ID, of course, lots and lots of stuff already. But for instance, in the .NET Web Academy, we had one challenge, which was building a Twitter clone or an X clone with Blazor and for that I also used, or for my solution, I also used identity here and I wanted to extend this application user, for instance, with the handle, right? The Twitter or X handle. So this is something that I want to be unique for each user and I have to check this manually. I have to tell my app and identity that this is something that should be unique. So when a user registers with a new account, then we have to check if the handle is already in use, similar to the username or the email address. But this is something that identity does out of the box. We can also check this out here on the account pages and then register for instance. So here we have our edit form, beautiful stuff. And then later we see, for instance, user manager create async and inside of that method, we check if the username is already used or not. But the trick is that Microsoft did here is that the username is also the email address. So you see, for instance, here the field, uh, the fields that we have for creating a new account is just the email and the password and what uh, identity or this application here, this template does then is, it says set the username with the email address, all right? So this is already something that, yeah, it's it's a little trick that Microsoft did here. And if you really want to split this and have a real unique username, you have to build this by yourself. So this is now uh, the example tutorial for that. And now a long, introduction in essence, but I think we have to build this little foundation here. So again, what I want to do is I just want to add a handle because this is something new. So you know how to add this new property and then also make sure that this thing is unique because there are two places where we can uh, configure our application to make sure that this is unique. And the first one is the database. So we do this in essence here in our DB context. And the other thing then is really the uh, register page. <clears throat> Anyways, the first thing, the very first thing that we have to do when we use this template is applying this migration because we already have this migration file here, you know, EF, uh, EF Core, and the Framework 8 stuff here with CodePress migration. And we see that in the app method, we will create some tables like ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET users, and so on. And for that, you have to check your uh, connection string here in the app settings JSON file. We have well, an example a connection string, and this would work out of the box because this is just a local DB then. So we can use here the SQL Server Object Explorer on the left. I can open this thing, of course, but it's loading and yeah, there it is. And when we open this up, then we should see, see it here, we have some databases here, actually. This, for instance, is the Blazing Block database from the uh, .NET Web Academy Masterclass, the Clean Architecture Masterclass, so don't worry about this. But there we will also then add the other database here. 
for this current application. So let me just uh, run update and then database it is and this should already work. Let's see. So we have build succeeded and you see what's going on here. It is creating the tables and indexes and so on. And then I like to use the uh, SQL Server Management Studio. We open the database and there it is. Unique property is the name of my database. We can double check this here. Server is SQL Express and here the database name unique property. All right, so this is what we got here. And now we have the ASP.NET users table. Great stuff, but now I want to add the handle here. So let's do that next. So for that, we simply go to our application user and just add a property here. So prop, we hit tab, and this is now a string. Could be nullable, maybe if you want or not. It's, well, in the end, it's your or you are the one to decide. We save this. And now let's do this one step after another. So let's first create another migration so we see what's changing in the database. And after that, then we make sure that this thing is really unique. So now I would like to add a new migration. So add migration it is. Um, add it or add handle property, for instance succeeded and here's our migration file and we see now that entity framework is going to add this column to the ASP.NET users table right and if you roll back this migration it's just dropping this column so let's update the database again all right great stuff so let's have a, another look at the database we refresh open the columns and here it is right so here now we see the handle and of course we also see it here and we see that we have no user. So now the next step would be to make sure that this thing is unique because let me just show you when we try to register an account, this thing accepts the same, this thing now will accept the same uh, handle. But of course we have to add the field first. So let me do this real quick. So here now in the register razor component, we add another property in the end. Let's say without any validation first. So this is a nullable string. We just call this handle. So this is now the input model added with the handle. And then here we can add another input text component. Let me just grab this thing here this down here now this is our handle name is also handle handle come on actually don't need the validation but copy and pasting right so let's just do it like that this is also the handle and the placeholder let's also just add handle here like that all right this is our handle in the edit form and now let's also add this to the actual user so here now what we can do is we check if input handle is not null then we just say that our user handle is the input handle all right so far so good we restart the application there we are, and now we can just test this real quick. TonyAndStock.com with Tony as a handle. Beautiful password here. We hit register, and the account is here. We can confirm this thing. And now let's just try that one more time with TonyAndStock.com. Again, Tony, password. We hit register. It says that TonyAndStock.com is already taken, the username. So with Tony1 at stock.com, we can still register. So handle really is not unique. And when we refresh this thing, we see this is the username, right? With that email address and the same handle. So let's change that now. And the first thing or the first place where I want to change this is really the application DB context, because here what we can do is we can override the onconfiguring method and make sure that we add this database rule, let's say. So for that, we say protected override and then on model creating. I said on configuring, that's wrong. On model creating, it's actually, it's actually the on model creating method. And here now we say model builder or builder in this case, builder. And then for our application user, we say this thing has an index on the 
handle field. That's the one, right? And here we just say is unique. That's it. This is how to add the uh, index in the end to the database. And when we now try to create the user after um, adding the migration first. So here, add migration unique handle, then we are getting an error when trying to add this migration. And I think I forgot one thing. We have to also call the uh, base on model creating. So let's save that and try that one more time. This looks better now. And as you can see here, create index unique true. So let's update the database now. All right, same because the duplicate key was found. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So let me just uh, remove one of these entries. Try that one more time. Okay, this looks better. We have this thing now here and we have the um, handle index here. Let's run the app now and we should see a confirmation. So let me have a quick look. Okay, this was not only, no, this was not called again. This is nice. So let's try to register this guy one more time with Tony at Stark.com. Tony the handle like that. We hit register and it says cannot insert duplicate key, row in opt and so on and so on. You see, well, this is not nice, of course. We get this page here for the user. This is terrible, but at least we prevent creating a user with the same handle, right? So when we have another look here, we see no account has been created. So that's that. And now let's make this, well, a bit more or with a better user experience. And this can of course be done here in our register page. So let's open this thing up again. And we already have this place here. If input handle is not null, we set it, but then we can add another method to check if the handle is unique or not. So here now, either you choose to uh, put this in a, or extract this in a, in a method, or I will just show you the code here. First things first, we normalize the handle. So var normalized, normalized handle is just handle input handle to APA, for instance. All right, so now let's just see if there already is a user with the same handle to APA. All right, so now var existing user is the following. We grab the user manager, all users, all right, and then here we check if there exists any user with a Lambda expression. And we wanna check the handle for any user if there is one where the uh, handle is either null and the uh, user handle to upper again does equal the normalized, normalized handle, this thing here. All right, so again, we, we grab the user manager with all its users. And then for each user we go through and then we check, okay, the handle of this user is not null and the current handle to upper is also the normalized handle. So the one that the user just entered to register an account. And if this is not the case, then this user does not exist. But if it does exist, then we can do the following. So if existing user, we say identity errors is a new array with a new identity error where we set the description to handle is already in use. Something like that. We don't need a semicolon here. All right, we close this. And here now we just say return. All right, let's try that. One more time, Tony at Stark.com. Tony with this account and password or this username and password. And it says handle is already in use. Great, and we now choose Tony Stark. We hit register. This seems to work. We can confirm. And here we have this handle. 
beautiful. This is how you make sure that your properties are unique. I hope you learned something. If so, don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for that. It does make a difference. Thank you so much to all my patrons supporting me, supporting this channel, everything I do. I love every single one of you. And don't forget to check out the Dot and Web Academy. Link as always in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you next time. Take care.